You're listening to What is a Woman, a podcast hosted by Catholic Family Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the What is a Woman podcast hosted on the Catholic Family Podcast. I am Holly, and as always, I'm joined here by my mother, Mandy, and we are back for a full episode. We're here. We're here. I'm alive. I made it through. <laughs> yeah. Your voice is still a little... It's a little shaky. shaky it's a little but, rough. But she can talk. So um, we're super excited to be back, and um, we have a lot of great content um, for this episode today. So are we going to just dive right in and uh Yeah. Let's well, do this. well, I thought maybe we would start off. I like to do maybe look at the book at the second half of the podcast right. and and let's look at um some practical what's going on mm-hmm. kind of in the world. In the world. Okay. Right? I was really uh I was really listening when I was listening to that in 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 Trebo. In Trebo. Yeah. Um and the, is the occult everywhere? And you know me, I'm I'm firm believer into the occult is actually everywhere. But there's a couple reasons for that, right? Right. There's so many errors going on in the world today, and we're soaking them up, all of us through through what media? Through the media, yes. And the media. My mom and I were just talking right before we started this podcast that the media is on. 24-7. 24-7. 365 days a year. Doesn't, don't take a break. Doesn't, never, never takes a break. Uh, and uh, us Catholics, we get uh, uh, one sermon a week on one, a Sunday. Now, provided you can listen to sermons. You can, you can, of, if you're, if you're so inclined to, you know, soak also up as I'll, many sermons as on possible. On that note, on that note, I will give you guys a little tip. Um, I... I'm on SoundCloud. Not me. I'm not on SoundCloud. I'm listening to SoundCloud, the app. And uh, I found a lot of really good sermons on there. Um, I found the whole CMRI Fatima Conference from 2019 is on there. Um, the recordings, you can mm-hmm. listen to them. So I just put them on in the van and I mm-hmm. and I just listen to sermons. And then right now I'm listening to, uh, well, when he was Father Charles McGuire. Uh-huh. who's now Bishop McGuire. Yeah. Um, he has some good sermons on there. I didn't know really what to search for, so I just typed in CMRI. <laughs> yeah. I know Father McGuire is not CMRI, but for some reason his sermons came up, so I thought um, I would listen to them. But that way that just helps you get a little more than one sermon a week. Right. Yeah, so but you I, have to want to. Right? You have to want to listen to it. And you have, have to, to make the plans, right? Yeah. Like entertainment is so much more interesting. I know, but I I used like, to I'm think gonna say, that way, I, and I I use the term interesting as an easier grab. Like you don't yeah. have to think. You know, it's fun. It's well, fun. It, it's, it's mind nothing. it's mind numbing. Mind numbing is what it is. Right. And the thing, and if you listen to a a sermon online, that's mind sharpening. Sharpening. You're sharpening your You're mind, sharpening right? Your mind. So you just have to figure out if you want to sharpen your mind or, or you, you want to dull, dull your, your mind. mind right? You know. Yeah. So I mean, and. and I'm being real with you, with everyone here. Like, this is just new for me. Right. I was never interested in listening to sermons online and doing all this reading. But I found that, you know, I was told by a priest that I had to do spiritual reading. I had to do it. Right. Okay. Not, not, he didn't, he wasn't for, he didn't say like, you must do this. It wasn't in that tone, but it was like, if you want to save your soul. Yeah. Spiritual reading is a must. You have to fill your mind with good things. So, and then I realized the more spiritual reading I did, the more and more I wanted. Right. So you have to start it's somewhere. It's like, I guess it's like, you know, when you develop, um, the you, you desire the finer things in life. Yeah. Right? Like even fine food. Fine food, yeah. It takes, it it takes, takes a, a while lot. to cleanse your palate. To mm. cleanse your palate to say, oh, I'll have some of that caviar. Yeah. Yum, yum. It's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like most people are not... They're not chomping at the bit to grab the snails <laughs> yeah you know like it, it's true and and music too right yeah the finer you know the finer the music is the more developed yeah you you've um trained yourself to be so that you know you listen to the other stuff and it just like oh it's head it's it it is it's a it's a headache it gives you a headache you're and you're just like and then if you really sit there and you listen to the lyrics mm-hmm. in modern songs you're like what are you even saying? That yeah. doesn't even make sense. Like, who was it? Um, was it Michael Knowles did um, 
about Beyonce's song and he he read the lyrics. He didn't say he just read them off a piece of paper. It was just garbage. Like and I don't mean garbage like disgusting. It was literally nonsense. Nonsense. Yeah, they all She wasn't are. saying anything. It was just a bunch of words nonsense together on a page. Like yeah, it was I mean that's I mean that's what they say and people there was a lot like even I mean I am the walrus, I am the egg man. I remember oh, you, that's the Beatles. Oh, the that's Beatles. really old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's like, what does this make sense? Yes. Like, uh, what are we talking? Drug references? I don't I even we know. Don't, yeah. we, we don't know. All we know is it doesn't even make sense. So why would you want to fill your mind with that? Why do you? Why are you filling your mind? And and let's think about a couple of things, right? Um, if the occult is everywhere, yeah, and it is everywhere. It like is. we, in your when I was gone last week, you mentioned Saved by the Bell. Yes. Right. And um, it comes under that the end justifies the means, yes, right? Yes, and I said we were going to talk about that because it is so sneaky, sneaky. how they hide that. that. That when you're watching these shows and you you don't realize that, you know, at the end, by the end of the movie, that this character, well, you say it by the bell because I was yeah. talking about that, he's not a good guy. He's not a good guy. And they praise him like he's the hero because by the end of the episode, he's he's conquered whatever thing he wants. And I mean, most of the times it was how he could get out of school. Right, yeah. You know, and then all these things happen along the way. But by the end, he saved the day. And it's like, man, you lied, stealed, and cheated your whole way through this episode to get what you wanted. Yeah. But at the end... You got what you wanted. We're all singing a happy song and everything's yeah. all good because... So even like my mom and I were talking about, even in even if it's you're doing something for for a good, well, quote unquote, good reason. Yeah. Okay. Um, it if you have to lie and steal and cheat for that. Yeah. Well, a it doesn't work. That it doesn't work. It doesn't. Well, it does, it doesn't I'm talking work about way. in the movies. In the movies that they it, they, they work because it's it, not reality. It's not reality. But if you it, did this stuff in real life, no, because sin it has work. consequences, and you have to pay the price for sin. Well, so if you're going to create a whole bunch of sin in the effort to get what you want, well, maybe you should use that movie you were telling me about. Okay. As an example, well, well, first of that all, was a good first example. of all, we should go back to Introibo because he called it. Uh, moral relativism, okay. which is a heresy, right? Yeah. So that that is the end justifies the means. And it's practically in every single thing we watch. So when we sit down to watch something, we're soaking up an actual heresy. Yeah. Right? That that this is and possible. And not only just soaking up, we're thinking it's wonderful. We're thinking it's By wonderful. By the end of the movie, everybody's laughing, getting along. So, well, and... well I was, you know, because I was sick and I was out of it. And I was listening to a lot of sermons. But honestly, I was really out of it. And I couldn't even hardly gather a thought. So sometimes I was looking for just a little bit of fluff to pass some time. And I found this movie. And I, I it was called Mandy and the... Forgotten Christmas is that I what I said? That's it was? what you said it was called. Mandy and the Forgotten Christmas, and she's a young girl, and it's uh, and I was I, I was so kind of I don't know annoyed by this movie that I I mentioned it to you, and yeah. you said, well, could the kids watch it? And I said, yeah, like it's like it was like a Hallmark thing, Mandy, yeah. and I think this is a series. This Mandy, she's a young girl. It's like Pioneer Days, but it's kind of like a Hallmark thing. Yeah, it's not. Um, it's weird. It's not my tech cup of tea at all because yeah. a it's, it's not historically accurate. It's not. The it's costumes never, aren't. Yeah, it's just to me they're always nonsense, and I yeah. can all, I can't really take a lot of nonsense myself, even in my entertainment and anything. But anyway, so I was watching it, and you said to me, she, you said, um, "Well, can the kids watch it?" Is because you're you're always looking for something for the kids. Yeah, to watch. because I mean, let's be real. Your kids are not going to sit down and listen to a sermon, right? Like, I mean, you can't. They have to have some form of entertainment every once in a while. Yes, yeah. And I said, yeah, yeah. It's like Hallmark, which it's it's you know. And then I was thinking about it. I was thinking, wait a minute, it's full of this heresy. Yeah, it's full of the end justifies the means. Yeah, yeah. From the beginning of the movie to the whole complete end, this Mandy, who is a you know nice little girl, she's about 13, and she's in a boarding school, and she finds somebody in the attic, a young girl living in the attic, and she's told she's not to go into the attic. So through the whole movie, she's constantly lying, She's constantly stealing because she has to steal the key to get into the attic because she finds this girl who wants to go to the school, mm -hmm. right? 
and she's constantly um, deceiving people, stealing food to take to this girl. But she's doing it for a good reason. But she's doing it for a good reason. So yeah. that's why they, that's how they get you. That's how they get these kids. Yes. Even in light entertainment. Yeah. It's there. Right. So, and you know, it, you're allowed to steal. You're allowed to lie. You're allowed to deceive your superiors if you're doing it for a good reason. If, and of course, you know, you being 13, you know way much more. Right. Yeah. yeah. You way know way you more. You know way more than the lady running the orphanage. Right. Or well, boarding, no, school. boarding school. Sorry, well, boarding orphanage. school. <laughs> so anyway, so at the end, she gets caught. Mandy gets caught and, and um, she gets punished. But she still... You know, she couldn't go to the ball. So she still wrinkles her way out of this, cons some old guy to, you does know. Does she go to the ball? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she goes to the ball. So she pretty much does everything she's not supposed to. <sighs> yeah. And then still gets her and own way. And then goes to the ball. Not only does she go to the ball, but she takes the girl in the attic to the ball with her. Oh, man. Right? So then, and of course, at the end, you know, we all have tears and we all see... And we all have a good cry. And we all see how wonderful Mandy is and how wonderful the girl in the attic is. And yes, she deserves to go to the boarding school. So, of course, the end justifies justifies the the means, means, right? So, when in reality, you know, if you wanted to handle that in a saintly way... Yeah. You would have told the superior right right from the beginning, hey, there's a little girl living in the attic. Is there something we can do for her? Yeah. (laughs) End of movie. But, you know, that would make a very short movie. That would make a very short movie. (laughs) But it still doesn't stop that that is exactly what that is, moral relativism, that the end justifies the means. And And so when you put your little kids down there, like you have a daughter who's 13, you put her down there in front of a a a show like this, Mm -hmm. you're actually teaching her a heresy. Yeah. And I mean, because nobody would look, no modern secular person anyways would look at that movie and think there's anything wrong with it. No, they won't. And I'm going to tell you. Because they've grown, we've grown up on this. Right. And I'm going to tell you how widespread this is, is that um, a, a question was asked in a set of a contest group about can you... Can you lie if it's to save somebody? Mm-hmm. Right? Can you lie? That's the end justifies the means. That's, exa- that's, that's it. exactly and what that means. That's, that's what that means is I can lie and do whatever it takes because I'm saving somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you think you're saving somebody, but that's not how truth works it's not how truth works you're doing the exact opposite when you lie that's sinning so when you when you're sinning or stealing whether you're stealing food to feed somebody or you're you're creating dysfunction and chaos Mm -hmm. right so it's actually the exact opposite when we tell the truth and we're open and we're forthright then we're allowing God's grace to flow and we're allowing God to do what's necessary to help people. But when, but when we follow this nonsense where, where we can lie and deceive and cheat and, you know, cover up, what we're doing is we're putting more sin into the world. Well, and I think too, we have to have, you have to have that faith in God. Right. Like you, you have to have faith in God that, you know, you're telling the truth, you're doing what's right, and and he's going to look after everything else. And the chips fall where the they fall. And the chips fall where they fall. You cannot think that you're going to change something or control something or change the outcome by lying. Right. You're just going to make it worse. You're going to make it worse. And, and what you're doing is you're, you're really, really causing chaos. And, and maybe not right away. Maybe you tell that little lie. Maybe you say, hey, I, I, I think that lie was for the good of everything and, and, and you know, nothing happened. We're... You don't know what's coming down the pipeline. You don't know what's coming down the pipeline. Just because nothing happened right away. And God too. He also doesn't like, like the results aren't instant Mm -hmm. on anything good or bad. Right? Like, you know, they're not instant. You don't do a prayer and walk out the door and, you know. Like, sweet. Ta-da. Got what I wanted. (laughs) (laughs) It's all here, you know. And same with the sinning, right? We don't even, how often do we connect the um the chaos to the sin right we don't we We never connect it to the sin yeah you say why is this happening what is going on and if you followed if you followed the trail back you find well you kind of started it when you did this Mm -hmm. when you took that wrong path when you decided that a sin was a better option 
right? Yeah. And, and all sins have to be accounted for. Yeah. Right? So you don't, nothing comes for free and you don't get away with anything. No, you certainly do not. And so it's always better. Uh, your brother used to always say, the truth shall set you free. Did he? <laughs> yeah, he always said that <laughs> when he was a teenager. Because I, I said to him, I said, listen, you can't go around lying. I said, people don't call you out. I mean, just because you lied doesn't mean you got away with anything. Yeah. The truth shall set you free. I can picture him saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because uh, because because people all the time go, okay, they're a liar. Yeah. Like, how many times have you done that? Yeah. Okay, liar, not to yeah. be trusted ever yeah. again. Yeah. You know, put that person over there. They lie. Yeah. You know, so. And I mean, if the problem is, is when you lie. Yeah. You may get away with it for a little bit. You may yeah. get away. Like, and when I say get away with it, I, not to God, I mean to people. Yes. I'm talking to people here. Mm -hmm. You may get away with it. You're eventually going to get caught yeah. in your lie. You will get caught in a lie. And Jordan Peterson. And then, He's a clinical psychologist. He said he has never in all his life once found anyone who got away with anything. Yeah. So you, yeah, like you, you may, you may, and then the, but the pro other problem is, is you tell so many lies. Mm -hmm. The reason why you get caught is because you can't keep them all straight. Right, right. Now you, you can't, started. you know, the truth is the truth. So when something is the truth, you know, it's the truth, mm -hmm. you know? So if you, if you constantly lie and you're constantly, you know, making things that aren't there a thing yeah you're eventually going to stumble and you're eventually going to get caught in that so. right right but and i mean that th this person the group that had made this post their more their question was more what if it's for the good like what if it's for a good outcome but the the thing is is there's never there's there won't a, be a good outcome because be you good, have lied because you have lied exactly your sin does, I mean, evil, I always say this, evil does the work of God, just yeah. as Caiaphas murdered Christ, you know? So, yeah. I mean, but you don't want to so be the... when you say it like that. I mean, it is, it is. You don't want to be, you don't want to be the evil. You don't, yes, you don't right? want to be so, the evil. So, I mean, who the heck wants to be Caiaphas? Yeah, I know. You know? Yes, but we don't want to be Caiaphas. So, a lot of times when, because God takes all these bad things and turns them into good things... Mm -hmm. Right with divine providence, yeah. but um, but that doesn't mean people get away with it, and that means they don't have to pay the consequences. Yeah, but this is but the but the biggest point to this is how we've been deceived by this through our entertainment. Yes, that this is the problem. That's this, a cultism. This is the problem why nobody has not care in the world about rattling off a little lie. Yeah. You know, it was, just, it was just a little lie. It was just a little, or what do they call those little white lies? Yeah, or, you know, you know why? Well, you know, I really wanted to go there, or I really wanted yeah. to do this, or I wanted to, you know, whatever your reason. Yeah. And you, and, and I find, I've talked with younger people, and I'm not saying religious people, hopefully not religious people, but where they're just lying for, they've become so accustomed to lying, they lie when they don't have to. Yeah, because it just becomes part of your nature. It becomes part of your nature to just say lies. And you're just like, yeah. why are you saying that? that? <laughs> it just sounds stupid. Yeah. And it doesn't make you look one iota better. Yeah. You know? I mean, so the problem is then is like, so even I guess when you're thinking you're just watching, a, like you thought you were watching a purely innocent movie. And then if all this stuff is in there, in the media and it's always in there what right do we, what do we do well, well we gotta shut it off we gotta shut it off you know like i mean you know we have to find we have to say is it worth it because if if i didn't see it i mean and you know i didn't see it right away i said yeah i did say to you you said yeah you thought you said it was fine i mean i, I, I wouldn't said, have picked that i can tell you i wouldn't have picked that up <coughs> sorry <laughs> It's cold still We're hanging covering. on. <laughs> so, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have picked that up. No, right. And I and I was. You said, well, could the kids watch? And I said, yeah. It's because it's, it's a series, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. I'm sure the kids could goofy as it is. I'm sure, <laughs> you know, they'd be all right with that. And then I thought to myself, well, wait a minute. It's it's uh, moral relativism at its finest. Yeah. You know, this little conniving girl. And she's and she's not. She's portrayed as a very sweet little girl. Well, I mean, I guess that tells us. I guess we should stick to the story of the saints. <laughs> yeah, we should, right? We should because then you're wondering why your kids lie to get what they want. We'll have to um, 
Well, I'll put this little plug out there. We'll have to tell Glorious Heritage that we need more cartoons. Right. Because, you know, I will say that, though. The kids are drawn to the goodness. They are. Yeah. Because they don't get it. You know, they came out with that first episode on St. Margaret Mary. Yeah. And we watched it. And as soon as it was over. Yeah. Um, Or no, it wasn't the first time we watched it. We watched it again at home. And then as soon as it was over, my son was like, okay, when's the next one? <laughs> what's coming up next what which one do we watch next i said oh i don't know that there's another one and then they had put out that little snippet here on the catholic family podcast of um huh. saint pius x mm-hmm. i said oh here's saint pius x we'll watch this but that was a shorter episode and then uh, after that one was over okay what's next yeah i'm like dougie i don't think there is anymore <laughs> yeah i I, know? I do want to point out though that if your kids are not used to wholesome it may take them some time. It, to... it, they have a hard time with it, right? Because if uh, if they're used to things moving at a speed, you know well, how... Well, the, the modern New Age cartoons, they're, everything is so fast and in your face and loud and, yeah. you know, aggressive. And, you know, they're, they're shouting out numbers on the screen. And, and bold, and too. Bold. And fire. So like these it's... slower moving cartoon, like the Glorious Heritage cartoons, they're wholesome and they're they're whole and they're just slow moving and just at a nice pace. Yeah. Your kids may not be drawn to them at the if, yeah, if then you, you have been you watching. have to like detox them. You almost. have to de- yeah. You almost have to detox kids yeah. because if they've been fed a steady diet of new age television, they they may not like it. They well they won't. But I remember the first time I watched a black and a black and white movie with my daughter. Uh huh. And she was just like, "There's no color." I said, "You're right. It's black <laughs> and white." And she was just like not having it yeah. at all. Yeah, we had to do. She's a little... like, "I don't understand. Like, I, there's no color. I can't see what color her dress is. I can't." And I'm like. Just relax. Give it a minute. And now have... we watch them. We watch black and white movies all the time. But we had to do a little detox. We had to do a little detoxing. Yeah. Yeah, because they're not used to it, they're and they and they're used to, to the speed of something. You know, yeah. I don't know what the oh, modern is, the new it. age. But I, I, the one thing that I did want to point out, though, and this is um, this is just my personal belief, right? Because we had um, that vision of Pope Leo the Thirteenth. Yes. No, right. not we. He did. No, he did. We didn't have any vision. <laughs> but um, where he saw the devil, you know. I know he heard voices. He heard voices. and Coming from the tabernacle. From the tabernacle. And do you want to tell us? Well, I, did, I looked it up. So this is, uh, I looked it up on uh, St. Joseph's Catholic Church website. So um, the vision of Pope Leo the Thirteenth took place on October 13th, 1884. <clears throat> So this was exactly 33 years to the day prior to the great miracle of the sun in Fatima. So um, basically Pope Leo had finished mass and he was coming down from the altar and he heard, he stopped and he just stared for 10 minutes and his voice went, or his voice, his face went really white. And um, I don't know, I I read it, but I don't know who asked him, but somebody asked him what he was staring at, and he said he heard two voices. So he heard the voice of our Lord and the voice of Satan. So on St. Joseph's Catholic Church website, they have the conversation between our Lord and Satan. So Satan said, I can destroy your church. And then our Lord said, you can, then go ahead and do so. I don't think my voice for our Lord is very nice. (laughs) Sorry. Um... And then uh, our Lord said, how much time, how much power? And Satan said, 75 to 100 years and a greater power over those who will give themselves over to my service. That sounds very scary. Yeah, right. So, um, And then Satan said, to do so, I need more time and more power. And our Lord said to Satan, you have the time, you will have the power. Do with them what you will. Okay, so that is very like terrifying it is terrifying you okay. know so that so, se- so 70 so then on um on saint joseph's website they said well 75 years from 1884 is 1959 so what a coincidence that on january 25th 1959 john the 23rd publicly summoned the second vatican council right right and then a hundred years from that was um the hundredth year was 1984 and that's when john paul ii um, it says, let the devil develop a church that is called Catholic, but is not. 
Right. The devil has twisted and distorted church teachings so much that there's truly a brand new church. And then it was also, um, they removed, they deleted the prayers. The Leonine prayers. Leonine prayers. Yeah. So that, so after that vision, Pope Leo had come up with the prayer to St. Michael and put in the, uh, yeah, the long version is really the long powerful. Is really, is really, really nice. powerful. Yeah. yeah. But the, okay. But there was a couple, there's a couple of things though that I kind of, in my head, I thought about in 1884, um, there was a couple other things going on at that time. Um, one around this time, I think it was a little bit before, but, uh, Alistair Crawley was born. I don't know who that is. Well, he's the, uh, Church of Satan. Oh, okay. right. That's why I don't know who that so is. So he started. He started the Church of Satan <laughs> around 1884. He, he was born. Oh, he's born. He was born. Oh, right. Okay. So I think he was born about. I, I'd have to look it up, but I, I believe it was 79 or something like that, 1879. And also, um, the motion pictures were created At around 1884. The, uh, around the same time Alistair Crowley was born. Oh, okay. Like they, they, they were just, they were, you know, invented. Yeah. Right? So by the time, and this is another interesting fact, by the time the motion pictures came out, like the first motion picture was probably around the turn of that century, the 1900s, yeah. right? Yeah. All those early movie stars were followers of Alistair Crowley. That's gravy. It is creepy, right? <laughs> so when you look into, because I was watching some of these documentaries, and they were all the the very first ones, the early ones were followers of Aleister Crowley, and so by that time, by the turn of the century, he had wrote the book of um, the book of law, oh, okay, right? Which is the number one rule is do thou what thou wilt, do thou what thou wilt. right? And basically, the book of law was written um, in three hours, yes, on, in three three consecutive days so for one hour a day Aleister Crawley went to a certain room had to stand in a certain place and wrote for an hour and he did that three days in a row that sounds so creepy like yes. do you really think he wrote that book right no well he's the head of the <clears throat> church of satan so we know who's responsible right. for the book of law right yeah like well anyway so here's here's my thing right so Pope Leo is getting a vision right yeah motion pictures become a thing and Aleister Crawley the Church of Satan has begun. Yeah. Right? And all these people are... And that's a pulpit. Like, people don't understand. Media is it's, a pulpit. Oh, 100%. Right? So if you're standing up there and you're wondering why the occult is everywhere, yeah. he is directly from his pulpit teaching Antichrist doctrine. Yeah. Like teaching, and everybody's soaking it in. And everybody, and we've been soaking it in for what seventy five, a hundred. Well, it's over a hundred years. It's over now. Over a hundred years now. It's over a but... hundred years now, right? Before you know, and so by the time Vatican II comes around, the people were ready. Mm -hmm. You know, the people. I've always said that the people were ready to, you know, open the windows and yeah, get rid of the ball and chain and. <laughs> You know, they wanted a new church. They wanted a new religion. They, right, because they've been soaking in all this. They've been soaking in the Antichrist, the Antichrist doctrine. Doctrine, and, right? The occultism. Yeah. So, I mean, if we really are going to be serious, especially about saving our kids, we have to get them away from that pulpit. Yeah. Right? And and it's it's proof. It's right there. Moral relativism. In a simple little well, wasn't, movie. Wasn't right? there something, uh, was it something you had? Well, there was one thing my mom ha did when we were kids. And this, like, uh, you know, we, could, we couldn't, we could it was actually very clever on your part. I don't know if you saw it somewhere, but I don't know how it affected my brother and my sisters. But for me, I could not watch TV in the room um, without thinking twice about what I was watching. My mom took this little piece of cardstock and... And she folded it in half and then she made like a little tent card. And then she put a picture, a holy card of the sacred heart. And then yeah. she just wrote beside it, would God watch this television show with you? And then so then every time <laughs> you sat down, you were like, God's looking at me. Yeah. He's watching TV with me. What am I watching? Wow. You know, but then there was another thing. I don't know if it came from you or somebody else that I saw that it was like, Whatever you, along the lines, I'm probably really going to mess this up, but it was something along the lines that it's like, you know, 
if you're watching, if you allow your kids to watch bad television, bad media, you're basically letting Satan babysit your children. Yeah. Did I see that? Some I don't know where. I well, said. it makes sense. I but don't. But it was know. basically like you're letting Satan into the room with your children. Like, yeah. why are you inviting that? Yeah, the, into your home. The turmoil in the toy box. Tur- yeah, go back to the turmoil in the toy box. But anyways, that little tent card, and I, I still haven't done it in my own home, and I really should. Yeah, well, I, I really should because I it was would very have, powerful. I would have gotten rid of the television. I know. Had I been allowed. Yes. But I, I wasn't allowed, so. Well, and it's the same for me. I mean, when you're in a mixed marriage and you're, you're Catholic, you're Catholic, your <laughs> husband isn't Catholic, yeah. Um, you, you do have to, you have to, you, you know, do have to tread a little lightly on so you have you to can. give and take a little bit you, can't you have to come pick in. your wars you have to pick your wars and i just i would rather have a tv and then you know it just was be like okay no we don't watch this we don't watch that you know i mean to, to be fair to my husband he didn't marry a catholic no right so he didn't marry a catholic so um during our relationship i changed i did all yeah, the changing he didn't he didn't, change. he didn't do any changing you yeah. know, so, and I always felt bad for him. Yeah. I did feel bad. I thought like, you know, if I could. This isn't what you signed up this for. This isn't what you signed up for, you know, yeah. to, you know, everybody to know that, you know, your wife's a. Religious fanatic. A religious <laughs> fanatic. And As I. We so often get labeled, which a title we're fine with. <laughs> <laughs> we are fine. I'm Holly. I'm a religious fanatic. <laughs> isn't that what we say? <laughs> yes. Oh, just kidding. But, um, crazy for God, crazy for God, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, uh, yeah, so it's just, but he never, my our dad, he never, he let the sign sit there, yeah. I don't know if it affected him in any way, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we, we were always like, you know, oh, I guess he was picking his battles too. I guess he was. <laughs> I'm sure he was, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so it's just these little things that, you know, you can do. I mean, I just wanted to throw that idea out there because for us as kids, like I said, I don't know about my siblings, but for me, it was very, it was very, like, yeah. uh, not scary, but eye-opening to be like, yeah. right, God is in this room. God yeah. is everywhere. I But <laughs> the problem with the television, which I, and all media, is we can... You can spot something, you know, immodest a hundred miles away. Yeah, it, but it's the trickery. It's the trickery it's with the, the the scary part. You know what? That you really got to think about what you're watching. You know what? What kind of heresies are they putting through? And you know what? I find, in my own personal opinion, the subliminal ones are the worst. They're way worse because they they because you think they, they're so clever. They clutch you... right onto your soul, and they you know they. You know, well, this, what is Mandy's secret Christmas or whatever it's yeah. called. Yeah, unforgettable. Unfor- or unforgotten. I don't whatever. know. It's so unforgettable. <laughs> we forgot. We've forgotten already. <laughs> uh, but no, what she, be, they, she's the hero. Right. She's the hero. She's the hero. She's the hero. She can do whatever she wants as long as it's for the greater good. It's that, it's for the greater good. It's for the greater good. You know, that old saying, you know, mm-hmm. like. We have to, you know. And then, so those things, they're harder to undo. They're harder to undo. Than to say, you know, oh, that show's trash, don't watch so, it. So, you know, so immediately we're always going, you know, for the easy route for the greater good, you know, like, which is, yeah. to lie. is that over there? No, I didn't see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, oh, that was a lie. That Maybe. was a lie, yeah. You know, like, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so that was our little thing. So why don't we uh, why don't we segue to our book here? Yeah, and we, uh, we'll just I think we'll just pick up where we left off, right? Yeah, we'll pick up. So we're still on chapter one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we're going. So this is missions, mission and duties of young women. So I'm just going to read a little bit here. Uh, quote: Man makes a direct attack. He goes straight to the mark because he is conscious of his strength. And if he meets with no difficulties in his way, or if the obstacles he encounters may be overcome by an energetic and violent effort, he reaches his end more quickly and more surely than woman. But if these obstacles are of such nature as not to admit a bold of resistance, if a circuitous and indirect movement is necessary to conquer them, frequently happens that in attempting to overcome them, he he is himself overcome and loses by his impatience and precipitation of precipitation all the fruit of his labor, end quote. Right. 
So it's it's it's, it's giving us a, a good rundown of men, right? And how a, a man, there, yeah. uh, how a man goes after a problem. So you know he he sees a problem, he sees how to solve it. He just goes direct and straight, just beeline, chip chap, done. Yeah, right. Whereas women um, aren't uh, women don't approach problems like that. No. Well, I should say they shouldn't approach problems no. like that. <laughs> they shouldn't, yeah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna read on a little bit more, and um, well, why don't we just why don't we just read on to the next little bit, and then we'll talk about it all. Okay. Quote: Woman, on the contrary, makes a sidelong attack, and in the pr- pros- sorry prosecution of her end follows rather the safer than the shorter route because she is conscious of her weakness and accepts the position in which this weakness places her and the necessities which follow from it, end quote. All right, so now we have, we have the, two, the two different views, right? The man, he's going direct, he's going straight to the problem. Diving right in. He's diving right in. And the woman, she, she comes at it sideways, right? Or she's supposed to. Okay. Right, because she doesn't have the force that a man has. But here's this is the problem that we're having right here, right now. And I'm just going to throw this little name out there. Mm-hmm. You, you don't want me to throw it I out there. I don't want you to throw the name out there. You Mom. want me to throw the name out there. But I think, I think that we should because everybody knows what a Karen is. I just... I just, I feel really bad for people whose name is actually Karen. Yeah, and I know a lot of them. Why do I know a lot? And they're really nice. And they're really nice. Why do I know a lot of Karens? Well, because it's your generation. Karen was a very popular name for your generation. It's probably the most popular name, right? So it's the women of my generation. So let's think about this for a minute. I was born in 1962. Right. So all these women, this is, we're the, we're the, we're the cornerstone here, right? We're yeah. the Karens. So we are the we are the guinea pigs. We are the ones that were raised to be the feminists. So and so now by the time we're, you know, forty and whatever, fifty and sixty, we're just coming in like all guns a blazing. I mean, should we maybe break it down a little bit just in case by some chance some of our viewers have never heard of the term Karen before? Yes. It may be like, what's a, what do you mean Karen? Like, what's this Karen? Well, so Karen is a um, uh, urban dictionary term for yes. a woman who is often a meddler or like, you know, the woman who's always like, I need to speak to your manager. I need to speak to the manager right, right now. now. What that's we- what that's who they've dubbed a Karen. So the modern generation. She's has, large. She's, she's in charge. charge and- she's uh she and she's telling everybody like everything is, and, li- and like it is and how it is, right? Yeah. So, but if you would think about that, so isn't that the definition of what the man is supposed to be, though? Right. Right. There's a problem. He needs to go see he the manager. He needs to go see the manager. He needs to go approach the thing head on and right. Like, you know that that that's, that's what Karens do. That's what Karens do. That's and that's why. That's why. The term, and I, I, you know, again, please, I have a. We don't. I know a lot of Karen, so you guys and, okay, are great and don't, people. Don't be mad at us. We didn't come up with the. Term. <laughs> yeah, we didn't come up with the term Karen. It's just it. it that is so prevalent today. Like everybody's like, oh, Every, and everybody hates them. And never, yes, everybody hates them. They're not. They're always making fun of the Karens. They're, they're making always fun like, of them, right? Whether you're on the left or you're on the right. Yeah. The right, the left's making fun of them. The right's making yeah. fun of them. They're, you know, okay, boomer, boomer yeah. Karen. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, and that's because she's actually her her personality is actually very repulsive. Yes. Very, very I mean, repulsive. And I, I, I'm the type of person too. I'm just gonna say, if I'm out in public with you and you and you want to see the manager and you want to complain, I'm gonna go way over to the other side of the store. Yeah. I am because I I do not want to be there when somebody's going on to a manager. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm with you, I don't want to be with you when you're going to go on to the manager yes. and rant and rave about something. And we we have got to see, see this, this injustice this stopped or yeah. stopped or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like I I don't want to be around you because it, I find it embarrassing. And, and like, you're just ripping somebody's head, head off. off. And I'm and just, half the time it's just you know. A, an employee serving you the coffee or something. Yeah, and, you and know, they, like they put the cream in right or something. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, it's never anything like. Or you know, it's there's your mom ripping everybody's anything. head off. You know, yeah. there's and um, 
and it is it's not it's not pla- like the woman she goes at it according to our book she's supposed to go at it at a gentle so if something's wrong she doesn't go in directly guns a blazing guns yeah. a blazing she said okay like say say we have a problem with the neighbor right? right i can't i can't think of a problem maybe he's putting your garbage his garbage bags on your yard or something yeah right so you know the husband or the karen <laughs> will <laughs> will go oh. pouncing over there to demand some sort of justice yeah. perhaps right but a woman will say okay well maybe we can come up with a solution to stop this from happening yeah. so we're going to come at it from sideways so we're going to be okay we're going to be i'm going to say we're supposed to be so if this is not our tendency we need to start thinking about how to make it our tendency right right you know, like to say, okay, we'll find a solution that doesn't involve me running over to somebody's... And ripping your head off. <laughs> you know, I'll just say, oh, maybe if I put this here, this yeah. it'll stop this. Or or maybe if I move my car over it's this way. It's actually kind of... Uh, I, don't, I don't maybe want to use this term because maybe this doesn't sound right because I do also hate passive aggressiveness. Yeah. I do hate that. Yeah. But... Um, is like it, Passive aggressive is nasty. No, okay, so then maybe that's not the right term, but I feel like the woman should maybe, let's take your example for the garbage or whatever. Like, you know, maybe she might in a calm way suggest to her husband, well, why don't we just put a little fence? And then, yeah. you know, like, so it's like you're put, you're putting a line there. You're like, okay, don't put yeah. the garbage here. Yeah. But you're not really being rude about it, I yeah. don't think. Like, if it's your property and you can put up a fence. Yeah, well, you And know. it avoids confrontation. See, that's the other thing. Women should want to avoid. to avoid confrontation. I feel, yes, you know, like they and have I feel to like look at they, they have to look at it from the most charitable, charitable angle. Like, how can we resolve this? How can we come at this without upsetting people's feelings, without causing people to without, yell, without, without making a war? Yeah, because that's what you do. You you've set a president, so now yeah. you're at war with your neighbor. Yeah, you know, you've made a war. Yeah, right. They have. I mean, I have. The only example that I can think of is I, I have an uncle that lives here, and he's a chain smoker, right? And he's also a little forgetful. Yeah, very forgetful. <laughs> so there's no point in... Har- harassing him about things. Harassing him about things because, you know, he remembers, oh, okay, and then he would forget, right? So he goes into the bathroom, and he, he'll go be in there for long periods of time smoking away. And um, he likes to use the sink, as the ashtray, right? Oh, this so this is very annoying to me. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I, come on, we got to see, you know, and it's, sick full, sick full you know, and so, so because I'm in this situation, um, and, and I know there's nothing I can do about it without causing a war, you know. A war that he's only going to forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll be back to doing it again. So I said, what can we do about this? So I put in a stand-up ashtray right beside the toilet. Right. So you found a more <laughs> indirect way. Can, can to we be... just use this ashtray, okay? If we could leave, just and use this does. ashtray, this would solve a lot of problems. And he does, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah. So, so, I mean, you solved the problem without attacking him or haranguing yeah. him over it you know and you're keeping peace and in you're the house. keeping the peace and sure nobody likes cigarette smoke i'm gonna tell you yeah. that nobody here likes cigarette smoke but what are you gonna do but you know he's elderly he's not well yeah and you just offer it up i know like you're you're gonna what demand that he sits outside in the middle of winter like yeah i mean it's just sometimes you just gotta offer things up you know okay. sometimes you just to keep the peace you just gotta keep the you peace. well that's the thing as women i feel like a lot of times myself i'm talking myself here we should be the peacekeepers yeah we need to be the peacekeepers we need to be the you know okay can i offer this up if that'll keep the peace yeah sure you know what you know why are you gonna stand there you know if you're karen you're gonna stand there and start yelling at an old man man that can barely walk and barely you know (laughs) you know sleep at night you know like it's just yeah it's just i think a lot of times well no Many times in today's modern world, the woman goes straight to the attack oh, she's, mode. She's she is she is large and in charge. Yeah. Like she is going to fix everything. And I mean, we all know that what we all know what's done that. Yeah, the dreaded F word. Yeah, feminism. feminism. Uh, right? And you here know? she is. She's behaving like a man. She's going. She's like you know. She says, "Husband, sit down. I got this." <laughs> 
And she goes storming over <laughs> with her guns of blazing. And then you know what? We also haven't talked about what that does on the other side of the scale. What's that? Well, you've now emasculated your husband. Yes. Because you're large and in charge. Yes. And he's, you're going to deal with it. And he's sitting over there watching his wife take command. Playing video games. But, yeah. And you've, <laughs> you've emasculated your husband. Yeah. yeah you know? Yeah, you know? So, okay. We'll go back to the book. So, quote, by avoiding obstacles when she cannot surmount them, she obtains from a prudent delay what she cannot wrest from the present moment. She has no hesitation in stopping short and turning back when an unforeseen difficulty presents itself to resume her efforts afterward with greater energy. She makes one of those skillful retreats which oftentimes evince more gen genius than, tr than a triumph and take from the victorious enemy a part of his advantage. Flexible as the reed, she bends to the storm, whilst man, like the oak, is sometimes crushed in his attempt to weather it. End quote. I like that. Yeah. Flexible as the reed, she bends in the storm. She bends in the storm, yeah. So it makes you really stop and think, how much do I bend? How much do I bend? And remember... Am I flexible like a reed? From our, from our, what does God want? He, blendable, what was that word? Uh, pliancy. Yeah, pliancy. Was it pliancy? Yeah, it was pliancy. Yeah. We've seen, uh, by, by the time we're done here, we're going to be yeah, experts at that all word. These words, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but bendable. Right, yeah. right back there. She has to be bendable. She has to go. Okay, you know. Okay, this isn't okay, working. This isn't working. Let's try a different approach. Let's do Let's this. You know, or, or you, you know. know, or what happens in a family when when okay, we're all going, you know, out somewhere. We're going out to dinner. Every, oh no, we can't go out. You know, something happens. Yeah. Right, everybody's excited to do something, and then something happens, and it stops you from being able to do that exciting thing. Yeah. So now the woman has to be like, okay, it's okay, it's okay. We'll do this instead. Yeah. It'll be just as fun. Yeah. We'll have just as fun. We'll yeah. have a picnic here. Yeah. We'll have a picnic in the living room. It'll be just as fun, I promise. Yeah. yeah. You know? So she she's bendable. She's, you know, she doesn't, you know, like collapse like the end of the world. It's <laughs> over, you know? Oh, we couldn't do this. No. She has to think of things. She has to be kind of creative. Well, and, and to me, it sounds like, you know, she has to always be on her game. Yeah. In a way, not... Not in a conniving way, but like in a way that you know that you can, you can be, well, I'm going to use the word again, bendable. Bendable. You, you're not, you don't have your, don't set your heart on something so much so that if that doesn't come through, if that doesn't, you can't bend. Right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Like don't. Yeah. Well, you have to, you have you to You have really to be, be able to You have to be really adjust. able to accept God's will. Right. You have to say, so God says, well, and I mean, God didn't want us to go there. So be, let's do this instead. You and know? being bendable, that is accept, like being able to accept whatever God is going to put in your path. Yeah. And move with that. Yeah. And not be so stuck in your own will. And, yeah. you know. So um, I'll just read one little bit here more. One little more. Bit more. And actually, that takes us to the end of the chapter. End of chapter one. Woohoo. So, quote, woman displays her fortitude chiefly under misfortune. Here, her greatness shines in all its uster, like the willow which grows on the riverside and dips its weeping branches into the passing stream. The heart of woman seems to be renewed and to acquire new life amidst grief and tears. Adversity which fills man with dismay and completely prostrates him, raises her up on the contrary, and redoubles her strength. Forgetting herself to think only of others, she is able to bear the weight of her own misfortunes and to relieve the miseries of those she loves. Her soul expands and enlarges itself in proportion as it is filled with tears, and her features seem to brighten and to assume a more beautiful expression under the influence of her size. End quote. That so, is beautiful. It is beautiful. You know, it so is. the woman and is... And that's why we like it, because we're women. <laughs> <laughs> she is the willow dipping. She's what the, does it say? She dips into the stream. She dips into the stream. You know, with... Do I dip into the stream? There's a question to ask yourself. <laughs> dipping into the stream. Next time you're not very bendable. <laughs> but I mean, if you think about that, if you think about that, who's the most beautiful example, right? Well, obviously our blessed mother. Yeah. You know, she, she's at the foot of the cross. Yeah. You know, like a willow dipping into the spring. <laughs> it, this is these writings from the 1800s I, you know? i'm doing actions over my there. mom's doing actions over there <laughs> oh so. sometimes on a pad podcast you guys don't get to see what i see <laughs> anyways but no um 
like you know our lady um I mean, her whole life, all she did was think of others. Yes. She never thought of herself. Never. 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 Not even in her greatest sorrow. Yes. The way of the cross, she's there, you know, watching her son be crucified. And she watching knows. Watching him fall, watching, you know, and... And, and she, she knows it's for the salvation of men. Yes. It, it's, you know... You know, it, and it had to be. The sorrow had to be, right? Yeah. So... So... <laughs> where do you go from there wow yeah. <laughs> just let that sink in for a minute but um i i'm glad we got to the end of chapter one finally <laughs> right, right. only four episodes in but uh yeah no i think that chapter was well that last end of the chapter that we read about i think that was very good to um put into perspective there yeah about uh a little food for and and about... if we if we have a hard time being this person like we have to say to ourselves, you know, like stop ourselves. I don't know what we could do maybe to any any kind of practical application. Well, I think uh, for me, I know for myself personally, one of my biggest problems, and I really, I feel like I have gotten a little bit better at this, but I really struggled with it, was reacting. Yeah. Right away. You know, like you know, something happens and you just react. You react out of anger. You react out of disappointment. You react out of, you know, and as women, um, we have to be more, we have to be more calm and we have to be, we have to take a second. Right. Before, and I mean, this is modern teachings and modern upbringings and not upbringings, but, uh, you know, sinking in where we just react and we just, yes. you know, we well, don't. it's because we are basically entitled to. Yeah, they, we are entitled. That is for you know, sure. and we we're not used to hearing. We're not the used word. to hearing the word no. no. We're not used to not getting our own. We're way. not used to not get getting our own way. We're not used to these things. Like I mean, a hundred years ago, they were far more used to them. Well, yeah. You know, life was way harder. Yeah. Yeah, you know. that's see, that's the other thing. I think we have it way too easy. You know, I do. I think we have. I think we have. We have way too many luxuries. We have way too many. And things are just so easy. You know, it was funny. I'll tell you, my uh, I work online. So I work and I write articles about decor for a company. So anyways, they sent us this list. And it was um, to pick our Christmas gift. They're going to send us a Christmas gift. So they had this list of all these things you could pick from. And on this list was... <laughs> I can't even say it because it seems so silly to me. <laughs> A mug. <laughs> I can't say it. Okay, this is a real product, you guys. And it's like almost $200. And I, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's a mug that keeps your coffee at the exact right temperature. I can't even say it. Because I'm like, this is how spoiled we are. Uh, my coffee has to be Mom, at the I'm exact not lying. right temperature. It's, it, you can, it's a mug. That you charge, you yeah. can charge it up, and if you want your coffee at, let's say, exactly, I don't even know what people have their coffee at, a hundred and something degrees, you can set it so that your coffee is at, stays at that exact temperature the entire time you're drinking it. Wow. Is that not a first world problem? <laughs> I was like, is this real life? And it's like, $200. Is, yeah. Like, I... I just about fell off my chair. I okay. I didn't pick the mug. Just so everybody knows. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe you could have given it to me for Christmas. I could use to have my tea at the exact right oh, temperature. Oh, but I was just like, this. okay. First of all, that tells you a couple of things. There's way too much money going around. Yeah. Number two, that is just like so bad that we are that that yeah. you can't just make. A cup co of coffee and put it in a mug and drink it. You well, have to. We, so we've we've graduated from the room temperature, right? Because yeah. we live in a society too. You have to remember where the room temperature always has to be perfect, right? We can never be too hot. We can or never too be too cold. hard or too cold. Now our drinks can't be too hot or too cold. Everything and has to be. Perfect. I just was like, because when they sent this list, it was funny because I was like, all these products they were all around the same value, so. Yeah. Anywhere between two hundred to three hundred dollars, and then the last one you could pick, it said such and such mug. I was like, okay, so you're telling me I could pick an air fryer or a mug? Obviously, I'm gonna go with the air fryer. Yeah. So I'm like, why is this mug on here? So then I clicked it and I opened it. I was like, you have 
got to be kidding me. <laughs> and I'm sorry for anybody listening if they if you own this mug. <laughs> but I'm sorry. I just think that is like Yeah. Like talk about like Talk about the inability to even do, do the remotest suffering. Right. Like you can't drink a drink that's slightly like I remember, colder or slightly too hot. I remember when remember when we first I first started blogging and doing stuff and it was like the biggest joke running was for a busy woman was that, you know, she made herself a cup of tea yeah. at eight o'clock in the morning and then she sees it sitting on the counter at four o'clock and it's ice cold and then you're like, Oh, there's a tea out there that some woman didn't drink or something. Yeah, that yeah. was the big joke. I'm totally butchering it. But anyways, and then I was like, you know, because for the longest time, that was my life. Yes. You know, you make, when we had the store, my mom and I had a store, you'd make a tea at eight o'clock in the morning, customers come in. And then you're like, oh, where's my tea gone? You know, and you're looking around, oh, there it is, ice cold over there. And I used to look at it and be like, should I just drink that and make it a sacrifice? And, you know, when it's like six hours old and drink it ice cold, you know, like... Maybe yeah. I should just drink because it's wasteful if you don't, you know. Right, right. And then sometimes, you know, you could reheat it up in the microwave, but that's never as good. So yeah. down the hatch she goes, but now you have a mug. <laughs> <laughs> now you have a mug to take it, away your, your suffering. Sufferings, you know, but like that's and that's what I feel like everybody, every product out there is a way. We're constantly developing things to take away the suffering. Yeah. You know, and I never thought of that before until I seen this mug and I'm like. Right. You know, we, we so. are in our inability to suffer or just not even to suffer. Like, that's, a, that's not a suffering drinking a, a cold. I mean, people pay for cold coffee. Yeah, I read, um, in what's that with God in Russia? Yeah, I, I've, I started it. I haven't finished it. Yeah. Well, they, he was lucky if he got a tea, you know, like oh, they got yeah, hot water. Would, well, they got 23 ta- years in a Russian prison. prison yeah. You know? And here we are. We have to have our drink at the exact, exact not just hot, not just cold, <laughs> the exact right temperature. And we have to be able to set that temperature. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. You have to think where all this is going and it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. No. So, I mean, but. we just have to be on our, on our game. Yeah. We have to keep our, our minds spiritually sharp and yeah. ready. And, um, I do believe that. And we um, have to get back our womanhood. If we've yeah. lost it to the Karens, yeah, we got to get it back. Yeah, no, for sure. And um, and I think that you know, with this podcast, hopefully, we help some people and uh, some women, and we can. Well, we're le- I'm learning too. Anyways, I'm learning because I, like I said at the very beginning, I think the very first episode, I said I couldn't read this book on my own. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they use too many words that I don't, and the and the writing is very old. You know, yeah, so. it is. I mean, sometimes when you're reading it, it's what did she just say? Yeah, no idea. But because yeah. you have to really look at it, you, you have, have to, to break it down. So it that's down. why we're doing this to hopefully help and uh, and uh, let's uh, get back to uh, figuring out. Let's Where get we back need to, to be as women, our dipping, dipping willow, willow. <laughs> bending. I'm and... never going to see a willow tree in the same way. Ever. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so um, I think we'll leave it there for this episode. And um, thank you so much to everybody for tuning in and listening again. And um, hopefully, we don't have any more breaks. I know we had two there. Maybe you'll be sick next week. Uh, no, don't you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time to be sick. Yeah. Um, so anyways, so uh, thank you very much for tuning in and um, I hope that everyone has a blessed week and as always, may our Lord bless and our lady guide you. And St. Teresa, pray, pray for, for us. us.